Welcome to a use case demonstration of the WSO2 API Manager. Let's learn about access controlled API development. In this section, you will learn how to control access and permission in the API development by using roles, and you will also learn how to create an approval process for a critical point in the API lifecycle. The development process is not complex when working with small teams because there is no need for roles and an approval process very often does not exist at all. The common problem that a company faces when the team is growing is the need to segregate responsibilities. Permissions change with roles. Access to certain resources need to be controlled and limited. API developers create, version, and test APIs while permission to deploy needs to be provided to a senior team member, team lead, or API product managers. One of the common requirements is to separate developers into teams. The APIs have to be visible only to developers in the same team. In the other cases, critical points of the API lifecycle sometimes require approval from the upper management, such as the change to published, created, or deprecated status, creating a new subscription, a new application generated, and even a new token request needs to be closely monitored and approved. In the case when you need a sophisticated workflow, you will use an external workflow engine that is part of WSO2 Integrator. But when working with a limited budget and the approval process is relatively simple, the proposed solution is to use the workflow capabilities in WSO2 API Manager 3.2.0. API developers would have an internal slash creator role, allowing them to only create APIs. Team leads or API product managers will have an internal slash publisher role, allowing them to publish APIs, which means changing the API status to published. Team separation will be enabled by defining roles in the Publisher Access Portal Visibility section during the API's creation. Access to the Developer Portal will be controlled with the internal slash subscriber role, while the API visibility will be dictated by the roles that are listed in the Developer Portal Visibility section during the API creation process. In the end, users that are a part of the Approval Management Group will have admin permission to get access to the admin portal. By default, the WSO2 console only has an admin user and predefined roles, which are namely internal slash creator, publisher, and subscriber. Let's create team A and team B roles that will be used for team separation you don't need any additional permission to be tied to them. Next, roles FIN and ACC will be used to limit API subscriptions for application developers. Again, you don't need any permissions to be tied to them. Now, let's create the users. User app dev A1 is an API developer in team A. Let's select the internal slash creator role and the Team A role. Similarly, let's create App Dev B1 with the same permission, but let's select Team B instead of the Team A role. For Team Leads, let's select Matching Team Roles and Internal Slash Publisher instead of Internal Slash Creator. Next, let's create application developers who subscribe to the APIs, name them sub1 and sub2, and assign the internal slash subscriber role to them. Sub1 will have the fin role, while sub2 will have the ACC role. In the end, let's create an approval manager user with the admin role. The admin role is needed to access the admin portal. The approval manager will be able to see if there are any tasks that await approval or rejection under the task section 
in the admin portal. First, let's create a global API that will be accessible to everyone. Next, let's create an API that is visible only to Team A in the Publisher portal. In the Design Configuration section, under the Publisher Access Control Visibility drop-down box, select the Restrict by Roles option and type Team A role. In the same way, let's create an API visible only to Team B by entering the Team B role. Note that if you make a typo, an error message will pop up. Both APIs are in the created state. In order for the APIs to be published, you need a team lead with the correct permission to log in and publish it. Users with the correct permission will be able to block, deprecate, redeploy, or demote the API back to the created state using the lifecycle section. Currently, both the team APIs, together with the global API, will be visible in the developer portal. To limit access, you need to navigate to the respective API's design configuration section in the Publisher, select Restricted by Roles for the Developer Portal visibility, and define the desired roles. The Team A API will be visible to everyone that has the FIN and ACC role, while the Team B API will be visible only to the users with the FIN role. After these changes, only the global API will be visible in the developer portal because it doesn't have any restrictions. The sub-1 user will be able to see both APIs while the sub-2 user will be able to only see the Team A API because the user does not have the FIN role. Currently, the approval manager doesn't have any tasks to approve or reject in the admin portal. In order to set up the approval process for the API state change, navigate to the Resources section in the API Management Console and open the workflow extension.xml configuration file. By default, the API state change is controlled by the simple workflow executor. If you change this to the approval workflow executor, you can define the status changes that you need to control. By default, the status change from created to published and published to blocked will need approval. After these changes, if the API changes its state from created to publish, the API status will appear as request is pending. In the lifecycle section, you will also see that the lifecycle state change is pending. If you change your mind, you can delete the request by deleting the task. Now, the approval manager will see the pending task, and after accepting it, the API will transition to the publish status. In order to add an approval process to the subscription change and application keys request, as before, you will have to modify the workflow extension.xml configuration file. A new token request is covered by the product application registration executor. Let's change it from simple workflow executor to approval workflow executor. To tie the approval process to the subscription update event, Let's change the subscription update section and change the simple workflow to the approval workflow executor. Let's test this. First, let's update the A team API and add more subscription plans. In the developer portal, change the current subscription for the default application from bronze to unlimited.
In the upper corner, you will get a message stating that the subscription tier is updated, but the status is tier update pending. To test an application key request, let's create a new application and name it Demo. When you try to generate new application keys, you will get a message stating that the request is pending and needs approval from the site administrator. In the admin portal dashboard, you will see two pending tasks, one for the subscription update and another for the key generation. As you can see, using the proposed solution, you can control access to the publisher and developer portal based on internal roles. WSO2 API Manager 320 allows you to create an approval process for the API lifecycle as well as for its consumption. There is no technology or vendor lock-in when using the WSO2 open source solution. Thank you for watching and hope you learned something new and useful.